pathology, esophagus, then stomach, liver, pancreas, gallbladder, their enzymes, small intestine, and then large intestine, okay? So let's start with the description. So <clears throat> the digestive system is open end system. It starts from your mouth and ends at the anus. So it is open-ended tube, and it has several names like gastrointestinal tract, GI tract, alimentary canal, digestive canal. These all are the same for the GI tract name, digestive tract, okay? Uh, digestive tract or animal, uh, alimentary canal organs can be divided into two groups, okay? So all the digestive organs, are either they are tract or canal or they are helping organs. So canals start from your mouth. So this is like vestibule, opening of the mouth, oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, you see esophagus then becomes a stomach. Some part is covered by your liver. Then it constrict again, becomes a smaller tube. That is small intestine. These all are small intestine. Slightly enlarged, dilated, large intestine. And then anus. So this is elementary canal organ. Oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. And on the side of this tract, there are some helping organs, which is called accessory digestive digestive organs. And they are teeth, tongue, salivary glands. We have three pairs of salivary glands. You see here, one, two, three. We're going to talk about that later. They make saliva. Then liver, the largest gland in our ab abdominal cavity gallbladder, pancreas. These are the accessory organs of the digestive system, okay? Digestive system organization. So when you put food in your mouth, we chew some food here and then it mixed with the saliva coming from the salivary glands, which contains salivary amylase, which digests some starch. And that is like bolus. Then bolus comes here down, mix with acid in the stomach, becomes chyme. And then chyme passes through the duodenum where liver brings bile, pancreas brings a lot of enzymes and they digest fat, protein, carb, and then it passes through the small intestine here, whether there is further digestion by the enzymes from brush borders of the small intestine epithelium. Whatever is not digested uh, before digestion, uh, sorry, after digestion, most of the small particles of nutrients like your carbohydrate, which becomes glucose, fructose, and galactose. Those are the three simple sugars. Then they are absorbed from this GI tract, a small intestine wall. They are absorbed nearby capillaries, which is around the blood vessels. Around this, uh, small intestine. Uh, fat, so absorption of carb, protein, and fat. Carb and protein is absorbed into blood capillaries, whereas fat is absorbed into lymphatic capillaries. The absorbed fat then does not go to liver. What happens? The absorbed fat through the lymphatic vessels then comes to the neck, 
through the neck veins and then they drain into the right atrium. But carb and proteins, when they are absorbed into capillaries, they join, they form the portal circulation. And that portal vein then enters the liver. Liver metabolize again further that nutrients and then liver veins exit from there and join the inferior vena cava. That's how the small intestine and liver is working together. They have integration. Whatever is not digested, like a lot of stuff like stars, cellulose, some fibers, they are not digested. So they pass through the large intestine and there are a lot of bacteria in the large intestine. They modify them, digest them further, absorb water, salts, and then rest passage at feces downward. Good? Okay, so what are the major steps in digestion? Look at here. Before I go, you guys, look at this slide. And by the way, I have emailed you guys this slide. Do you want me to share now? Let me share too. So if you have not, while you guys are reading this, I'm gonna share. I have shared already, confirm someone. Yes, I have it. Thank you. Yeah. So now major steps of digestion. To put food, you see, when you put food in your mouth, that is called ingestion. So oral cavity, ingestion of food with addition of saliva and formation of bolus. So when you put food, you chew with your teeth, grind, chew, and then after chewing, uh, you put sal saliva from salivary gland, three pairs of salivary gland. This is parotid, uh, some mandibular, it's sublingual. And when you mix with saliva, then the food becomes bolus, okay? And then you see bolus passes through, the esophagus, the first part in the pharynx and upper part of the esophagus, it is voluntary. But once it goes down below the middle of the esophagus, then it is involuntary process. Then esophagus passes down, you see it is diaphragm. There is a hole in the diaphragm, then it passes downward. And behind the liver, it becomes a stomach. And then it comes into the stomach. You see some like shadow of pancreas behind the stomach, how pancreas is lying behind our stomach. So in the stomach, what happens? The stomach produce a lot of stuff. And most importantly, it produce hydrochloric acid, HCl, okay? Uh, it produce water, it produce uh, some of the mucus, uh, pepsin, protein digesting stuff. So stomach release gastric secretion, uh, like I said earlier, and digest food and forms chyme. So when bolus mix with acid and other gastric juices, we call it now chyme, C-H-Y-M-E. And stomach wall also produce pepsin. Pepsin then digest proteins and turn into peptides, dipeptides, tripeptides, oligopeptides, not completely amino. They don't release amino acid completely, but it makes, breaks down like in a smaller pieces. Once it passes from 
the stomach, then it comes to the small intestine. You see, the first part of the small intestine is starting here, which is behind the liver here. And then behind this transverse colon, this is coil tube, that is a small intestine. So first part is duodenum, then jejunum, then ileum. So small intestine, now when the, the, the uh, chyme coming here, which is highly acidic because the stomach acid acidity pH is like 1.8. So it is very acidic. But once it comes into the small intestine, small intestine is joined by your liver. You see here, the liver. Liver drains bile into your duodenum, first part of the small intestine. And this pancreas brings pancreatic juices. Pancreatic juices contains enzymes for all the digestion. For example, lipase for fat, amylase for carb, pepsin, trypsin, chymotrypsin, and elastase and other enzymes for other digestion. So in a small intestine, addition of bile, what does bile from liver do? That emulsify the fat so that pancreatic enzyme can easily digest them. So a small intestine, addition of bile, juice, digestion of chyme and absorption of nutrients. Once after the action of bile and pancreatic enzyme broken down nutrients into small particles, then they are absorbed. So absorption is movement of small nutrient particles from a small intestine wall into the capillaries, which is surrounding this small intestine. Whatever is not absorbed, pass to the large intestine. You see a small intestine in here, here is appendix. And this is cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and anal canal that all part is large intestine. So in the large intestine, there is 10 trillion bacteria, okay? So large intestine bacteria act on remaining undigested material and form feces for elimination. So whatever is not digested, broken down further by bacteria and large intestine then absorb water, some salt, if you are not drinking and your poop is hard, then large intestine, put some water, pump water here in your large intestine and then make your poop soft so you can pass it, okay? Uh, apart from this, large intestine also synthesize vitamin K and vitamin B complex, some of the vitamin. So that is the part. Okay, now histology of the small intestine. So both large intestine and small intestine is covered by the, here, the outermost wall is wall of mesentery, which is peritoneum. I have talked about this in lecture, okay? This is the mesentery, you see? Through two layers of peritoneum, which is called mesentery, your nerve vein, artery enters, around your intestine. And then outermost layer, that's why it's called, this mesentery layer is called serosha. Under the serosha, you have muscle layer that is called muscularis externa. Outer muscle, this is a smooth muscle. So outer layer is called the uh, longitudinal layer and inner is circular. And then you have submucosa, submucosa is the connective tissue, areolar connective tissue, and then inner wall is the simple columnar epithelium, which is mucosa. So mucosa, submucosa, serosha, and the cavity inside is called lumen, okay? Uh, between this muscularis layer, there are several myenteric plexus, autonomic plexus inside, which controls, and there is submucosal plexus, which controls the activity of this muscularis externa and submucosa.
So we talked about it, uh, accessory digestive organ and uh, gastrointestinal tract. We talked about it, you know. Okay, so now we are starting from the mouth. In the mouth, the accessory organs are, go ahead, tell me what are the accessory organs in the mouth? The teeth, uh, the tongue. Um, uh. I have a hard time hearing what you said, Dr. Shaw. Oh, the, the teeth. What, the are teeth the, the what are the accessory organs in your mouth? Accessory digestive organs. Are the salivary glands included here yes. or not? Yes. Oh, okay. Because we deliver saliva in mouth, so it is considered there too. So salivary glands, teeth, tongue, those are the accessory organs. So your salivary glands produce saliva. Saliva has several function. Saliva moistens food to assist swallowing. Initiates a start digestion of starts via amylase. So salivary amylase, uh, uh, digest your starch. So when you eat like potato, when you uh, mashed potato, when you eat or bread, mashed potato contains pretty much starch, saliva, uh, the carbohydrate, polysaccharides. So saliva breaks down the starch into disaccharides and oligosaccharides. This saliva acts only when there is pH like six or seven, which is our mouth pH. There is another source of salivary amylase. Can you turn off you guys when you are not talking? Okay, so, is that the one in the pancreas? Yes. So another um, uh, salivary amylase coming from another organ is your pancreas. That's why your small intestine your, and your mouth pH are pretty much same, but your stomach is highly acidic. Initiate digestion of starch via amylase, dissolve food molecules to assist receptors. So what food you are testing is because saliva, if you have dry food, you will not taste it better. So saliva breaks down and then chemical compound put you in your uh, taste receptor on your tongue. Inhibits bacterial growth via antibacterial enzymes and cleans oral cavity. So salivary amylase and other antibacterial enzymes also kills mic microorganism, bacteria in your mouth. That's why the person who has like dry mouth it's a high chance that you're gonna get oral cavity infection, uh, gingivitis, caries. If your mouth is, that's why you have to drink water a lot. Okay, some people are like always dry mouth. That means you are exposing yourself to high chance of infection of your mouth uh, and oral cavity in your teeth. Uh, the, that's why, you have to chew your food properly. When you are hurry, what do you do? You just put it in your mouth and you gobble it. Don't do that. When you chew it, you digest a lot. If you eat faster and you don't chew it, what happens? You are giving load, extra load to your stomach and intestine. That's how sometimes tummy hurts because they contract more because you have not digested earlier. You have given the mouth work to the intestine, okay? So you see here salivary glands, this is called parotid. Para means around, otid means ear. So it is around the ear, that's why we call it parotid. You see parotid is above our masseter muscle. This parotid gland is exocrine gland. It has a big long duct, parotid duct, which drain into your mouth, which is opening superior to your second molar inside your mouth. Then there is submandibular, which is sub means under mandible. And they open all the way into your frenulum of the tongue here. 
in the submandibular. They have a duct from here, which opens here under the tongue. Okay. And then there is sublingual ducts, which is like seven to 10, no, eight to 12 ducts, which opens under your tongue and they all make saliva. Okay, so esophagus, before esophagus, pharynx. Pharynx has three parts. The part which is inferior to your nose is called nasopharynx, this part. Behind your oral cavity is called oropharynx. And a small area behind your larynx is called laryngopharynx. So these are the three parts of the your pharynx. That's what sometimes what happens, you are eating and then you are talking. Uh, sometimes like breathing problem, this uvula cannot hold. Like every time you solo uvula, close this nasal pharynx. And sometimes what happens, you the pressure does not balance and you your food instead of coming this way, it goes here in the nasal pharynx. And that you see how irritating is that if you have experience. Then it passes to the esophagus. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, let me go and then I will come back. So from mouth to anus, every time when it changes name or it transition from one structure to another, there is a valve we call a sphincter. If you have taken my anatomy class, you're gonna guide me what are those sphincter. So from pharynx and esophagus, there is a sphincter between if sphincter and upper part of the esophagus. That is sphincter is called or valve is called epiglottis. Epiglottis is the valve between the pharynx and larynx, but there is lower part of the pharynx and there is esophagus, there is a valve. Upper esophageal sphincter. Now esophagus and yeah, stomach. Yeah. Upper esophageal yeah. sphincter. Okay. Then esophagus and stomach. Between the stomach and the esophagus, here behind the liver, yeah, there is cardiac. another sphincter that is called cardiac sphincter or lower sphincter. Lower. This is the one. Lower, lower esophageal sphincter because it's a lower part of the esophagus. Okay. Uh, this is the only sphincter in the body which is called physiological sphincter because this sphincter is controlled by hormones, by autonomic nervous system neurotransmitter. Then between the stomach and duodenum, there is another sphincter. What is that called? Pyloric. Pyloric sphincter. Now, between the small intestine and the cecum here, ileum and cecum, there is another sphincter that is called? Ileocecal valve, ileocecal valve. And now then you come to large intestine and anus. Anus has two sphincter internal sphincter. All the sphincters are circular muscle, you know, like your mouth, you can purse your mouth. Similarly, anus has also similar structure of circular muscle. And that is called internal sphincter. And there is another sphincter, outer, external anal sphincter. And that is the skeletal muscle. So external anal sphincter, you can control. Like when you feel to defecate, what happens? When you don't have access to restroom, what do you do? You control your uh, the urge to defecate. So you control by external sphincter because you have control from your cerebral cortex to the external, not on the internal. The internal runs with the amount of feces holding in your rectum, okay? Here's a short one and a longer one. Which one is which? Not short and long, external and it's uh, internal. 
But isn't there one that's like 10 centimeters and one that's like two centimeters or something like that? No. Okay. Yeah. You are uh, somewhere, I think you just going somewhere, remembering something else, I think. Uh, this esophagus is 25 centimeter long. 10 centimeter, I, I, I don't see it here, okay? So that is the, the sphincters, okay? Now let's talk about the stomach. You see, this is cardiac sphincter. Stomach has several parts, fundus body, and it has several layers of like outer layers, serosha, then three layers, muscularis externa. In a small intestine, there is two layers of muscularis externa, but in a stomach, you have outer longitudinal, then inner circular, and then oblique muscles here. And then inside <coughs> mucosa, there is gastric fold. This fold, so when you have like no food in your stomach, your stomach is like very shrink. So it's, it is folding. If you eat more, you can unfold these foldings and increase your abdomen. And you see here, you lose, this is the pyloric sphincter and then duodenum, okay? Uh, the liver is lying here. You have two major lobes, this right largest lobe and a small largest lobe, accessory organ. And then there are two smaller quadrate and quadrate, don't worry about that. Liver makes bile and then deliver into, you see. First they bring a bile here in the gallbladder, which is under the liver, and then drain into your duodenum. You can increase here and magnify, you see your liver. This is the common hepatic duct from the right and left. This one is common hepatic duct, not this one. This should be wrong. Like this is right hepatic duct, left hepatic duct. This line should be here. You see this small area? This is common hepatic duct. And then you have gallbladder. Gallbladder has cystic duct. When they combine, this area is called common bile duct. Common bile duct is coming here and then joining with pancreatic duct from the pancreas. Pancreas drains here and gallbladder also drains. So every time you eat fatty food, fatty food comes here, then your gallbladder constrict and brings bile here, and then pancreas brings enzyme here and digest. Further magnification. Again, right and left hepatic duct, common hepatic duct, cystic duct, bile duct, and then bile duct and pancreatic duct joints here. Is it labeled correct on the second image? Yeah. These are the hepatic duct. This is common hepatic duct. They are saying common hepatic duct here. It should be bile duct. Thank you. Right. Let me tell you, have you heard about gallstone? Tell, tell us yes. about it. Gallstone, which is called cholelithiasis. Have you heard about that word? Okay. Can you type uh, that out? Yes. Cholelithiasis. C H O L E L I T H I A S I S. Cholelithiasis which is called gallstones. So gallstones means stones in your gallbladder. Who gets this? If you have high cholesterol. So there is four FS to remember easy. Female, for four Fs, first F, female. Second F, fertile. Third F, 40. Fourth F, fat. So you see, if you are female, 40 years of age, you have like five kids, you are fat, 
that means you have a high chance of getting gall stone. Why the gall stone is big problem? As long as gall stone is here in gallbladder, it does not do anything, pretty much. They stay there, no problem. Sometimes what happens, you eat fatty food and they contract and then some of the stone get out of this duct and come into bile duct and then laws here, block here, bile duct. Then what happens? Next day you're gonna eat again fatty food, gallbladder again they start contracting, bile is not coming. Blockage, then swelling of these areas, swelling of the liver, then bilirubin buildup, kind called jaundice and a lot of inflammation of the gallbladder, cholecystitis, and that can cause acute fever, chills, and then you have to go to emergency. Even worse, sometimes this stone comes down up to here, you see, here, and then lodge here. If it is blocked here, what will happen? If, let's see my arrow, you can see, if the stone is blocked here, what is it gonna block? It's gonna yeah. block pancreatic duct too, yeah? Yeah. So pancreas is a very dangerous organ. If you block pancreatic duct, then what happens? Pancreas contains a lot of enzymes. Then pancreas will start digesting its own cells. There will be swelling of the pancreas, pancreatitis, and that is dangerous. In that case, doctor will go take you to the emergency room immediately, put you on NPO, no pearl, per oral, nothing from the mouth, IV, saline starts, put you in ICU sometime, and then they do ERCP, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. They put pipe from your mouth, bring here, and then take out this stone and put it into your small intestine so you can pass it through the... It's a longer story, I'm not gonna go there. That's how gall stone can cause pancreatitis as well as inflammation of the bile duct and gallbladder, okay? Accessory digestive organ, we talked about it. Large intestine has this part, you see, vermiform appendix is not the part of digestive system. This is the part of which system of the body? The lymph system. Yep, it is lymphatic system organ. So the part of the large intestine is cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, S is like S, later S, sigma, so we call it sigmoid colon, then rectum, this area, and anal canal. The large intestine absorb most of remaining water. Whatever water you drink, 90% is absorbed into your small intestine. And then whatever 10% comes here in the large intestine, 90% of that 10% is absorbed here, okay? So absorption of most of remaining water, they produce two vitamins, production of vitamin B and K by bacteria in the large intestine. Large intestine bacteria are like, they are gram-negative bacteria. They are trillions. They are like 400 species of gram-negative bacteria in your tummy. So if the dirtiest place on earth is anywhere, it is your large intestine. Okay. And then through the mass movement, the a fecal material is compacted and passed down. Okay, in the stomach, the main function of the stomach is to make acid, hydrochloric acid. So how they make? This is the histology of gastric epithelium. So if you take any stomach epithelium, you have a gastric pit, which is depth of the epithelium, and there are several endocrine glands, exocrine glands in the gastric fish. There are cells. So let's see the cells. There is mucus neck cells or mucus cells. Then you have cheap cells, you have G cells, you have parietal cells, mucus cells and mucus neck cells. So what they do, let's see here. This mucus cells simply produce mucin 
and when mucin mixed with water, it becomes mucus. Okay. There is mucus neck cells also mix mucin. Cheap cell mix pepsinogen, which is inactive. It does not digest your protein at, okay. Here is G cell, G cell produce gastrin. Gastrin act on the GI tract to contract more and act on parietal cell to produce more HCL. So parietal cells pump hydrogen ion and then chloride ion follow and they make HCL. HCL convert pepsinogen into pepsin and then pepsin convert now which is active protein into oligopeptides, dipeptides, tripeptides, and then it passes down to the small intestine where there is further digestion by pancreatic enzymes and the brush border enzymes of your small intestine, okay? The parietal cell also produce intrinsic factor, IF. What is the function of intrinsic factor? I'm giving you guys a break. Let's see your it says power. Help, sorry, it says helps the digestive system to pick up vitamin B12. Okay, it is, helps in absorption of vitamin B12. So Professor Shai, I have a question. When you talk about something being intrinsic or extrinsic, do you mean like for intrinsic within the same system? And when you say extrinsic, like outside of the body or just like which, within which, systems? Which part are you talking about? Um, like in this case, when you say intrinsic factor, so I know- Oh, intrinsic oh, 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 oh. <laughs> intrinsic factor here. It is the name given to this factor because this is the extrinsic factor is coagulating factors. That is in different thing. It is just its name. There is nothing extrinsic, no relation with any intrinsic or extrinsic. Okay. We don't have any extrinsic fa extrinsic factor here. Here we have only intrinsic factor. An intrinsic factor has the main function of vitamin B12 absorption. Okay. What is the function of vitamin B12? Helps with red, red blood cell um, production. Good. It helps with maturation of red blood cell. And there is another function. It makes DNA. Yes, DNF, neurons, particularly neurons. Okay. So if you have, and by the way, this vitamin B12, you can get only from animal source. So if you're like vegan, complete vegan, you will not get vitamins. You have to take supplement. Okay. Absorption. So small intestine, once everything is digested, a small intestine absorbs amino acid, triglyceride, simple carbohydrate, dietary vitamins, and most of the water in the GI tract. Most means what percentage of water you drink? 90%. On the other hand, large intestine, no nutrients absorption. Nothing is absorbed, none of the nutrients particularly. Mostly water, salt. And like your kidney, distal convoluted tubule is under the influence of uh, aldosterone. Your large intestine is also under the influence of aldosterone. So aldosterone absorb some salt, sodium and chloride. Uh, bacterial flora produce vitamin B and vitamin K, some additional water absorption, whatever is left there. In the mouth, you have like teeth, you see, accessory organs. What are the teeth name? You see that these front teeth, incisor, then canine, then premolar and molar. The last molar teeth here is called wisdom teeth. Okay, so yeah, incisor, do you know how we put the name? 
incisor means you cut in two pieces. Then you have canine. Canine, what does canine? Canine means? Canine means dog. So they like tear things, how dog eat meat. They don't chew, they just, when you give the fresh meat, dog will tear it. That is called canine and then premolar and molar. Molar is mortar-like. And other structure you see here, this is uvula, tonsil, soft phallate. What did you say molar was, it was like? Something? Mortar, mortar, mortar. Mortar and no. pestle, mortar and pestle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. This is the cut section of your teeth, you see? You have a, outside you have crown and then root, neck. In the root you have the pulp cavity which contains blood vessels, enamel, gingiva, dentin. We talked about a stomach already. So the major function of the stomach is, oh, one most important function I did not tell you guys. So stomach churn your food. Churning means mixing from all sides. Like when you put your uh, clothes after you wash it and when you put in dryer, what does dryer do? Look. If you have a transparent dryer, you can see from outside, look at it. You're gonna see how dryer moves the clothes from all direction. Exactly due to these three layers of muscles, they mix food from all sides so that it is mixing with the acid, okay? So thoroughly mix and swallowed substance, disinfect the food, break tough organic structure and digest protein. And there is another function of the stomach. Do you know alcohol, when you drink alcohol? Alcohol, there is few things which is absorbed from the stomach. That is alcohol, aspirin, and water, some water. So when you drink alcohol, it takes like minute to get into your stomach. If you're not eating fatty food and you are drinking an empty stomach, it's gonna pass to your stomach blood vessel and then to your brain and it will hit you fast. That's why I never drink faster with in empty stomach. Small intestine histology. You see the inner, there is circular fold. And then if you take epithelium, you have muscularis externa. Then some mucosa and mucosa has infolded epithelium that is called villi. And if you further magnify the villi, you're gonna see microvilli, which is the enfolding of the plasma membrane of that villi. So you see the surface area of each villus cell has extension of called microvilli. So microvilli are extension of the plasma membrane. And all together that makes for an extended contact with large amount of digested, digestive and absorptive surface cells. These villus and microvillus looks like brush border and they contain some enzymes and we call them brush border enzyme. So you see here, this is the epithelium. And on the epithelium, you have microvilli on the surface of epithelium. So when food is here, nutrients, they are absorbed into the capillaries, fat and carb. But you see the central, this is the lacteals which is lymphatic vessels, not lymphatic capillaries. Fat absorbed here into the lymphatic capillaries and then passes, okay? In the intestine, amylase, what does amylase do? You see amylase? Epithelial cell of the villus, like in the stomach. See, so this is epithelial cell at their microorganism, uh, sorry, microvillus, you see? It looks like brush border. They contains enzyme here. Plus, amylase is coming from pancreas. So what does amylase do? Digest the starch. Yeah, so digest starch and then they are carbohydrate. And now pancreatic amylase breaks down further. And then maltase, it becomes maltase. And then uh, the, the maltose. So these 
breakdowns are maltose. Maltase is the brush border enzyme coming from this brush from microvilli. And this maltase then further breaks down this maltose into glucose molecules. And then glucose molecule absorb into capillaries. That's how it digest and absorb. Does, does it break it down into gl glucose and galactose maltose? No. So maltose is broken down into glucose and glucose. If it is, okay. let's see if it is uh, sugar from your milk, which is lactose, mm -hmm. then lactose becomes lac uh, milk lactase. becomes lactose. And then yeah. this, this will produce lactase and then lactase will break down lactose into glucose and galactose. Yes. Are you following me? Okay, and then yeah. if you eat fruit, then fruit has a fr uh, fructose and fructose, sorry, fruit has uh, the sucrose and then sucrose, here is sucrase enzyme, breaks down sucrose into, uh, sucrose into glucose and fructose and, and absorbed. Okay, yeah. Okay. Here is enzyme activity, like you see, pepsin. Where do you find this enzyme? In the stomach. In the stomach. In the stomach. You see the pH? Pepsin is very active only in pH 2 or less than that. See salivary amylase, trypsin, where do you find salivary amylase? Either in pancreas or in your mouth. Where do you find trypsin? Small intestine. In the small intestine, a small intestine. So you see these two enzymes are very active into higher pH. This is all about the today's lecture. Any question? Where is the trypsin produced before it? Where is it before it goes into the small intestine? Like, where does it come from? Pancreas. Oh, that's right. Okay, thank you. Okay. If not, let me. We had uh, we went over the exam um, in the SI, and uh, there was a few questions that uh, we believe were um, marked wrong. Okay, well I will go over that. Okay. Um, should uh, sh should we stay and talk about it? Or? Right now. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, no, um, I'm not going to talk right up right now. I'm okay. going to go in, uh, all, all the exam with everyone. I think exam one. I have morning class. I have already re manually graded, so you can see change your grading if you have more. Yeah, yeah. If you are three three eight five, and I'm working on. I have to go like every question, everyone. So yeah, it it's it take that's a lot. It's a big thing okay yeah no problem i just uh just wanted to let you know okay um, yeah thank you okay no problem and uh and um for the uh 9.3 uh homework uh, you where do you, i'm gonna i'm gonna do that to manual grading where did you ask to, for that to be sent like how do we send that again? it was it was uh like upload uh-huh is it too late? Uh, it is late, but it's still you can email me. Okay, okay. through through um, Canvas. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor.